How's it going, everybody? My name is Swanny, and welcome back to another video. Guys, today we'll be reacting to Season 3, Episode 6, Aren't You Going to Become a Hashira? The last episode was a banger. We got to see a lot, actually. It was actually so much, and there were quite a few details that I loved that I ended up writing down notes. So, little recap from the last episode. Mitsuri saves the day. We saw her sword. Super interesting. It bends and curves, and it's, I mean, it's almost kind of like a whip. I mean, again, I don't know if that was intentional. I know I said that in the last video, but, I mean... Basically, there was a part that I thought was really funny where the chief had fallen on his head or he was about to fall on his head and Mitsuri catches him and he's, you know, he's like, oh my God, you know, to be caught by a lovely lady such as yourself. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're okay. And then some other guy, some NPC was like, oh, hey, you know, I also fell on my head too. And, you know, because they all want the same treatment, right? They all want to be, you know, in Mitsuri's arms, you know, me too, anyway. As for my next note, Tokito versus Gyoko. Gyoko has Tokito in a Zabuza water prison. Uh, I made the reference in the last episode. It was basically impenetrable from the inside, as it is for Tokito. Tokito tried impaling it with his sword, but he couldn't get out. But before that, we saw that Gyoko is a bit... I mean, I know he's a demon, so I, you know, me saying that he's sadistic isn't anything too crazy. But his blood demon art and his whole entire deal is art. You know, he's created these fish. He's also created... A sculpture of swordsmiths it looks like his vase has swallowed you know maybe six seven eight swordsmiths and they're all alive some of them are dismembered they're all kind of crunched together uh, but basically there's swords in them all Gyoko says that the swords in them is you know poetic or whatever he was what bro I mean, the guy's just freaking weird but basically he turns it and they all wince and they all you know cry out and the eyes are bleeding it's just it's just rough it's just bad but on to my next point which is about tokito and his character development he's unintentionally arrogant with tanjiro uh you know very selfish guy but again tanjiro mentions that he doesn't sniff out any malicious intent and you know, there's nothing you know evil behind it and then as the episodes have gone on we've seen that tanjiro's words have hit tokito pretty deep uh, he then starts having flashbacks and he's saying you know where have i heard this before you know why does that sound familiar we see a light in his eye and as he's running back to the village after he was blown away by the leaf uh, he's running back to the village sees kotets up against a fish kotets is squeezed basically about to die tokito at first was going to run back to the village but instead he decides to save him um, and then, you know, he starts to remember more and more. But the main note that I actually wrote down was how Tokito ended up tanking the needle hits from the fish. Uh, he ended up protecting the swordsmith and Kotets. And honestly, that's huge development because he's gone from an arrogant person who's only thought about himself unintentionally, right? I mean, we can tell that his memories are a bit foggy. He doesn't remember. Uh, we saw a flashback with the master talking to Tokito saying how maybe one day he will remember all of his memories. Tanjiro's words have been helping him with that. Like I said, he's gone from a character who's only thought about himself and disregards everything else to now someone who's willing to go out of his way to protect people and i think that's huge but as far as him and gyoko we've left off with him inside the water prison and my next note being that nezuko lit up tanjiro's sword with her blood demon art which honestly looked really cool i've just realized that nezuko's pink fire i don't know if it's just the way that it's animated it just looks clean it looks nice anyway she lights the sword and the sword turns red hence the name of the last episode a bright red sword and tanjiro Oh my god, bro, the music was nice, but the sound effects, the sound effects is what I love the most. It's called Sun Halo Dragon Head Dance. I mean, what a mouthful. But basically, Tanjiro was able to decapitate three? Yeah, three out of the four of Hantengu's uh, Hydra demons. The last one was decapitated by Genya, which is my last note being that Genya, bro, what? Okay, so I thought the rapid healing was just something for Genya, a lot like Inosuke shifting his organs and, you know, Tanjiro having an insane sense of smell, hearing, whatever. You know, everyone's kind of got their own attribute to them that makes them strong, and I thought Genya just was able to heal fast. I mean, they especially stress the point that Genya was able to heal back the tooth very, very quickly except this time Ginya has taken like seven hits he's got Saro's head in his hands and he's turned around and he's foaming at the mouth he's got his demon eyes out I didn't even think about that just because not only have we not been led to believe that Ginya could be a demon but I forget that you know Nezuko can switch on and off her demon eyes and all this time I've seen Nezuko as the outlier to the rule I never for once thought that anyone else could be a demon right just because Nezuko needed Uro Kodaki's hypnotic suggestion and Genya is just big chillin', right? I mean, he's been around blood. He, we haven't seen him, like, you know, fiending for it like we saw Nezuko back in the Entertainment District arc. Back when that woman cut her arm and Tanjiro had to sing her a lullaby. We haven't seen Genya, like, on Demon Time yet. So I haven't even, you know... I wasn't led to believe that he could be a demon. You know, I was pretty surprised to see that. It's just that we haven't seen so much of Genya, 
right? And we saw him in Final Selection. We saw him when he passed uh, Tanjiro in Shinobu's place. And, you know, now we saw him for the past couple episodes. But it's not like, you know, he's been a consistent character for three seasons now. And he's now, we're now finding out he's a demon, right? Now, that would be crazy. So that was a nice twist there at the end. I mean, bro, I just can't get over that Sun Halo Dragon head dance. Uh, as for Huntengu, all four of them are decapitated. But given how we have six episodes left, I'm going to go ahead and assume he's not dead yet, especially since none of them are disintegrating and all of them have been decapitated. I know Tanjiro made the point that if you cut their tongues, it slows down the recovery. Maybe if you cut the tongues out of all of them, I mean, that does something. I remember he said something about the staff. But yeah, guys, with all that being said, that's all the notes I have from the last episode. The last episode was just a banger. You know, if the rest of the season picks up like this, I might be up top with the Entertainment District arc, man, because if we get more of the last episode in every single one, I mean, it's wraps. This might be the best season. So with all that being said, that's all the notes I have from the last episode. So without further ado, let's jump right into, aren't you going to become a Hashira? I wonder if Tanjiro could sniff it out. Like, he was, like, mid-fight, and he just senses that Genya became a demon. Oh, he shouldn't have Tanjiro been able to sniff him out from the start? Like, yo, something's off about Genya. Because when Nezuko's in her, like, you know, cute form, everyone still knows that she's a demon. So, wouldn't that be the same for Genya? <laughs> Dude, it was so epic. Yeah. Hmm. Bro, the red sword. I mean, obviously, but... What else? Maybe, like I said, maybe their tongues? Ooh. What emotion is that? Can you relax, bro? Yeah, Tantra's like, yo, I just want the best for all of us. Did Ginya think he was, like, an enemy or... Not an enemy, but... You know. Wow! Yo, finding that fifth demon is gonna be a little difficult. I love the double barrel. This is so epic. Two friendly demons. Okay, it is, yeah, it was sulfur. Oh! <laughs> okay, so it's not a different, it's the original. I thought they split off from him, though. <laughs> oh! Oh my god! Nah, she's, she's fine. Holy shit. Oh, I like that. It's in the shape of a vase. <laughs> I don't even think he's trying to be stoic. I think he's just... <laughs> I think Tokito is just like that. Ooh. What? Nah, man. <laughs> bro, bro, the the pink fire is so sick. 
Oh my god, and he's he's accurate too. He's going for the tongue. Oh, Nezuko. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, I thought Tanjiro was about to snap on him. Oh! He got a hit off. Let's go. Oh my god, dude. That Tantra's battle intuition is insane. He's mid-fight and he's able to give call-outs. Nah, bro. I want Tanjiro as a teammate. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's tiny. Yeah. Wow. No bigger than a field mouse. That thing's gonna be hard to hit with a gun. Especially while it's running and zigzagging. Oh. Bro, the accuracy. Holy shit. Dude, the durability. You know what? I guess it is a upper rank. Would be so easy to slash. It's just so small. You'd think that it, you'd be able to to cut it. Ah, oh, damn. Wow. Damn. Sucks。Nah。The mom is goaded. Oh, wow, we're getting a flashback. Okay. Oh, they're small Ginya. Yeah, after editing the first couple episodes, I saw where Mitsuri was talking about Genya and his brother. Wow, so there's a lot of siblings. Yeah, I'm not getting a good feeling about that. Oh, was that what that... That's what that uh, still frame was earlier. Oh my god! Oh, shit. Okay! Oh, and that's how he got the scar on his face. Oh, are they... Oh. Oh! That, it's the mom, yeah. Oh. Damn, bro, she didn't deserve that. Damn, what a hard day. To lose your mom and all your siblings? Oh, bro, I can't even... I can't even imagine. Oh, 
Wow. And he did. By killing the mom, he saved you. Genya. Damn, that almost had me. Oh. It's in denial. Damn the guilt. <laughs> so what happened? Because Mitsuri said that they were beefing. I wonder, and it's not because. No way. Wow. So how did, how did he make it? Yes, sir! Nice! Let's go, man. Bro, Tanjiro is just the goat, man. Oh my god. Oh, bro, what a move. Oh, my God. Nah. Oh, my Lord. Okay, so we can't regenerate his head. But he can regenerate this. Surely. Oh my god, bro. They, they Swiss cheesed him. Sorry, I know that was low-hanging fruit, but... Wow. Dude, what a backstory. <laughs> bro, this thing is so goofy. Oh! Dude, how is he just summoning... Bro, how is he just summoning that fire? I noticed that. That's why I, th I thought Nezuko was using her blood demon art mid-fight. When one of the demon's arms got slashed off, I thought Nezuko used her blood demon art to cut it off. But I'm sure there's some kind of explanation for that. It made sense how it stayed lit the last episode before he used the Sun Halo Dragon head dance. But, I mean, it's gone out, right? So I don't know... I don't know how it can just come back. Uh, it does look cool, though. I'm not going to complain too much. It does look really, really cool. Okay, so beheading the last one. Again, I thought that I thought that after they decapitated the scaredy cat demon, the two, so let's say the body and the head both grew two emotions. And then once those got cut, it spread off into two other emotions, right? So you have your four emotions. I did not know that the original... I'm going to have to go back and rewatch that. I don't remember the original separating itself from the other four. I wonder if it was like some sneaky, sly, like in the corner shot of him just running away. Dude, yeah, I just remember the, the body and the head flying after the mistosh, after Tokito uh, decapitated him and it forming two emotions. I don't remember him being on his own. Uh, it could just be me, maybe I missed that. Okay, so surely decapitating that last one is it. I'm praying, I'm praying that you don't have to decapitate all four and that one at the same time because that would be Bro, that would be damn near impossible. I mean, unless Tanjiro would be able to decapitate four and maybe Ginyu get one because Nezuko doesn't have a Nitrine sword. Oh, wait, no, because we have Mitsuri and Tokito, right? Wait, no, but Tokito is dealing with Gyoko. So we'd need Mitsuri to get one at least. And then Tanjiro could do the, you know, Sun Halo Dragon Head Dance or some other really sick move, get three like he did last time. And then Ginya can get one. Yeah, again, sorry about that. Low hanging fruit. Yeah, they Swiss cheesed them. I'm sorry. It was just, I mean, it was just too easy of a joke. But props to Ginya for taking that hit like a champ. Again, I remember he made the note that, you know, once he's beheaded, like he can't regenerate his head. If he was a demon decapitated by another demon, then you can regenerate the head, right? You only can't regenerate it if it's decapitated by a Nitrine sword. So does that mean Ginya is like a hybrid? You know, half human, half demon? How is that even possible, right? Because we've, we've only ever seen full demon and you know human i don't know Ginya is a weird case you know we never actually saw him become a demon i hope we get to see that because again maybe that would help answer some questions dude his his backstory was just sad 
uh, lost all of his siblings and his mom. He then cursed his brother, saying, you know, how could you? How, you know, you murderer, how could you do this? And then it almost seemed like the brother, it was in denial, maybe from guilt or just disbelief that, you know, he had to kill his mom and all of his siblings are dead. And I think there at the end was him taking all of his stuff and leaving town. But I wonder where things went sour because, because I know Ginya feels bad for saying that to his brother, but where along the line did the brother begin to not like Genya because the end of the flashback we saw that you know they left together they left on good terms you know let's take care of the family together from now on as I was editing the first couple episodes I saw the conversation with Mitsuri that I didn't catch on the first watch being that you know maybe Genya and his brother are arguing and she even makes a note that again the names are there there were so many names dropped like you know Haganezka Shinaza, I don't even, I'm not even going to try to pronounce Genya's last name. A lot of those got jumbled up for me, but I didn't actually start connecting the dots until I was editing and rewatching those episodes. But yeah, okay, so Genya is brothers with the Wind Hashira, that makes plenty of sense. I mean, they sound similar, you know, same scars. We saw how Genya got his scar. Oh my god, dude. Again, what a sad backstory. Almost had me. Actually, the part that really got me was... Genya was about to die, and all you, all you hear is Tanjiro in the back screaming, Genya, Genya, you know, like, aren't you gonna become a Hashira, the name of the episode. Genya's crying, because he's like, damn, like, I'll never be able to apologize, which I love. A little life flashing before your eyes, last minute reflections. Genya's having a very real moment, and then Tanjiro comes in, saves the day, and he's like, hey, you know, get up, dude, you're not done yet. Like, well, yeah, what you thought this was, man? Like, you know, we still got more work to do, you gotta become a Hashira. Unbelievable that Tanjiro's able to cover for Nezuko, slicing up demons for her, and then also, you know, giving callouts to to Genya as he's dealing with you know two emotions three emotions um <laughs> dude Tanjiro's again his battle instinct battle awareness is just on another level uh yeah even oh god was it rage Sekido he was saying like what's happening he's getting faster as he you know is continuing to fight he's getting stronger his moves are sharp I noticed as he was slicing and dicing, he was only going for the tongues to slow recovery. I mean, Tanjiro, I'm blown away. I mean, he's basically, I mean, I know he's having some assistance from Nezuko, obviously with her Blood Demon art, and assistance from Genya, but, I mean, he's basically handling Han Tengu on his own. I mean, I, that's just, maybe that's just me. Uh, of course, Genya was able to decapitate the Sorrow Demon, but, I mean, they were generated extremely fast. Uh, Genya can't slice the neck. Very surprising how something that small could be that durable, something that tough. He couldn't slice the neck. Then again, as we've seen in the past, Tanjiro would need, you know, an extremely strong Hinokami attack to be able to decapitate Gyutro or Daki. You know, and it's also no joke that the upper rank demons are that tough, right? Even their physical bodies being that surprised me. I didn't... I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting Ginya's dagger or knife to snap in half. I think he said Chisai, which is, you know, tiny, small. For Hantengu being that small, I was not expecting him to be that strong. <laughs> also, considering how he's just scared and running. I also love, I also love the detail how, like, in first-person shooters or really any game where you're being shot at, um, when you're running, you zigzag. That way, there's a chance that you won't get hit by a bullet. And I love that Hantengu, as he's running, is zigzagging. And it's, like Ginya said, it's already hard enough to hit a mouse, let alone one zigzagging through bushes, sticks, you know, through the woods. So, it's pretty funny, dude. Hantengu's original form is just so interesting to me. Gyoko still has Tokito in the water prison. Uh, nothing. I don't, think, I don't think we got a whole lot of development. Yeah, that's pretty much Ginya's backstory. Tokito is still big chillin' and the- oh yeah, it's a water vase. I, I like that detail, how it's in the shape of a vase. Big Ginya Tanjiro episode. Yeah, pretty great episode. Um, I really like that Tanjiro's there on backup for everybody. I mean, it really shows how hard he's been working, how strong he actually is. As far as my notes go, that's all I have. If you guys want the full reaction, it'll be on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Alright, hope y'all all have a good one. I love you.